Hey everybody, here we go. Uh, we're talking about experiments today. Now, experiments are different from observational studies because in an experiment, we actually impose a treatment on the subject. So we're actually doing something to these people instead of like an observational study, merely watching. So that's the big difference. Now, experiments give us one great thing. From an experiment, we can conclude cause and effect. Because if we design an experiment well, then we can see that we can get rid of all these other variables. So what we're left with is only the relationship between what we do to the subjects and the response that we get back out. So let's take a look at an example here. Is weight training good for children? If so, is it better for them to lift heavy weights for a few repetitions or to lift moderate weights a large number of times? Researchers at the University of Massachusetts set out to answer this question with a completely randomized experiment using 43 young volunteers between the ages of 5.2 and 11.8. The children, recruited from a YMCA after-school program, were randomly assigned to one of the three groups. Group 1 performed 6 to 8 reps with heavy load, Group 2 performed 13 to 15 reps with a moderate load, and Group 3 was a control group. There's our little guy right there getting ready to work out. The experimental units. That is the smallest unit that is randomly applied the treatment. And in this case, each of those was, was the child that was there. So what we start off with, we start off with the 43 children, and we randomly assign them to a group to be whether they're heavy reps, medium reps, or the control group. So it's each child. Now, we have to be careful of the experimental units because it's not always going to be so easy to find. The treatments themselves, also called explanatory variables, that is the condition that is imposed on the units or the subjects. If they're humans, we call them subjects. In this case, we had three treatments. The three groups. One, the heavy weight and low reps. The treatment two was moderate weight, high reps. Three was the control group and would say, don't do anything. The factors, also what the treatments are called sometimes. Okay, so we got to just be comfortable with all the different lingo. Now, when we refer to factors, a lot of times we'll have levels, when we have different values of the factors. So, for instance, if we had in the heavyweight group, if we had one group lifting 100 pounds, another group lifting uh, 50 pounds, and that was our heavy group, there's two different levels there, the two different amounts that they could be lifting. And so that would create a separate treatment group that we could have. And last, we have to talk about the response variable. That is the outcome we want to study. In this case, is the muscular strength and endurance of the children. Okay, three critical parts of an experiment. Very important. Number one, randomization. Huge. This first came about in the 1920s. Before this, they just picked their groups. Randomization is using chance to assign experimental units to the treatments. The idea is this helps create roughly equivalent groups of experimental units by balancing the effects of other variables that aren't controlled on the treatment groups. For instance, think about our 43 kids. Did they all start off with the same strength initially? Probably not. Some might be stronger, some might be weaker, some in the middle. We're going to have different strengths. What randomization is going to do, it's going to spread all those things out into all the treatment groups equally. Likewise, some students might be more uh, susceptible to getting stronger. They might just have better family genes for gaining strength. It might happen quicker. We don't know who has that. So by using randomization, we know that that's going to spread out equally to the groups. Next, replication. It's not doing something over again. That's important. What it means is using enough experimental units in each group so that any differences in the effects of the treatments can be distinguished from chance differences between the groups. For instance, if I only had three kids and did this study, if one kid got stronger, well, it could have just been because he could have got stronger anyways. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean the group. It might have been his genetics or different things. So replication means that we do it to enough people in each group so the differences isn't just between the kids, it's between the treatments that we're actually imposing. And the last thing that we have in an experiment is control. We want to control variables that might affect the response. Use a comparative design and ensure that the only systematic difference between the groups is the treatment administered. For instance, in our case, we added a control group. Because what if it was, it's a YMCA program, so maybe they're playing a bunch of games outside running around. Maybe their leg strength would get better regardless of weightlifting. A control group really lets us see that and lets us compare our treatment groups to what's, um, what the control group happened. 
Okay, we can draw this up in a design, and this is what this looks like. We can do this actually on the AP test as well. So we start off with 43 volunteers. We randomly assign them to the groups. Group 1, heavy load. Group 2, moderate load. Group 3, control group. And we want to compare the muscle strength. It's a nice visual to see what we're actually doing here. Okay, now afterwards, these exercises were perform performed twice a week for eight weeks. The leg extension strength significantly increased in both exercise groups compared to the control subjects. Increases of 31% for the low rep and heavy group and 40.9% for the high rep and the moderate load. So therefore, we can conclude that the different training programs actually caused the difference in the results. Because we had the random assignment, so we spread out these other variables, and we had a control group to compare it to, so it didn't just happen by chance. What if we have to write this? Because that's going to be a big part of this class. How do we correctly write this? And here's what we would do. First, we would give every student a number, 0, 1 to 43. We will ignore numbers 0, 0, 44 to 99, and repeats. The first 15 unique numbers will go to the first treatment group, heavyweight, low reps. We want to talk about our treatments. The next 16 will go to treatment group 2, moderate weight, high reps, and the remaining 12 will go to the control group. After eight weeks, we'll compare the leg strength, and we see that response variable there. And that's what we have. So that's experiments. Just the basic gist behind what we're doing. We'll explore this more and some ins and outs that go along with it. But right now, the three important parts, randomization, replication, control, and we just want to make sure that we write it nice and clear. Thanks.